I got love for you, man. You know what, I'm what are we talking about? You know, I'm not here to start any trouble. I'm only going to say nice things about you from now on. I think you're handsome, and I think you're a wonderful host. I'm fat and I'm overweight. Just don't say anything silly. I was waiting for you to say that. I'm not laughing about it. You think this is funny? I take it serious. You know, I don't want y'all to take anything that, out of context that I'm saying. He's very funny. He likes to joke around a lot. As a personality and as an entertainer, yes. This is going to be really quick. I'm not taking any questions. Go ahead and get comfortable. I'm going to talk for a little bit. You're listening to Cabby Presents, the podcast. Welcome. Well, well, welcome to the, t- to the show. Welcome. Well, well, welcome to the, t- to the show. Welcome to the show. It's been a busy couple of weeks with travel and uh, shoots and planning for the summer. I'm your host. Cabby Richards, and I'm in a good place. I got a new favorite song for the spring, and it's called Happy by Pharrell Williams. It's on the Despicable Me 2 soundtrack. I believe Pharrell is doing the entire soundtrack, again, to the soundtrack for the first Despicable Me. This song, Happy, is a 100% guarantee to put you in a good mood. So I suggest you buy it from iTunes or listen to it. A few months ago, I had my film geek, Ari Pollock, uh, on the podcast to do his movie preview. And his sleeper of the summer was a film called Now You See Me. So I saw it over the weekend. And it was so much fun. Very, very entertaining. And I recommend it to everyone. I have to get him uh, back on. I have to get Ari back on to talk about uh, Game of Thrones someday. Because season three was great. And George R. R. Martin, the author, who has two middle initials, like did Tol- uh, I guess Tol- did Tolkien have two? In- I-, I feel like Tolkien had two or three initials. The 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 author of the um, Lord of the Rings uh, books and the Hobbit was it like J. K. K. Tolkien or something? But who has two anyway? Who has two middle initials? Uh, George R. R. Martin, the author of the books, which the series Game of Thrones was based on gives zero bleeps about the audience and his characters it's amazing how popular the show's become and people that people are filming their reactions to the episodes more specifically the red wedding episode it's like a new not gonna go as far as to say it's like two girls one cup or if you've ever seen that that uh, commercial where guys are just popping pimples, it's absolutely vile. Okay, this is nothing like it. However, the shock and the horror is similar. And I'm not going to spoil uh, any of season three for you if you haven't seen the season, because I know people just like to crush a bunch of episodes in a row once they're all released, whether it's on demand or Netflix or TMN or whatever. All that I can say is that episode nine of every season, one, two, and three, is the game changer for Game of Thrones. Moving on. My guest on the podcast is a part of a small collection of Canadian basketball players that are changing the game of the sport in this country. With apologies to my American constituents, we're going to focus on Canada and specifically Toronto for a little bit. Not a lot bit, but a little bit. The focus and awareness of basketball is growing with more and more talented players emerging from above the 49th parallel and shining on the hardwood in the United States. Recently, the most sought after high school prospect in the world, Andrew Wiggins, chose to play collegiate ball at Kansas University, which was a huge deal. He is Canadian. Also, a shameless plug. You can watch my half-hour half interview with Andrew Wiggins on YouTube. Just type in Cabby Presents Andrew Wiggins. But back to my guest. His name is among the future of Canada basketball, and it's more bright than it's ever been. He joins me from the West Coast right now. If it's going to be uh, an interview, I'm going to conduct it. So I'll answer my own questions, ask myself the questions, then give you all the answers. The first time I met my guest was at a red and white game back in 2007. I think it was 2007. 
at the Air Canada Center as we were spectators in the Toronto High School, like the all-high school basketball game, sitting courtside with my friend Dave, and along with a young, witty 16-year-old, this dude is cracking jokes next to us, and I was a fan. The next day, I got an email from my friend Dave with the subject line, kid next to us. In the body of the email is a full-page spread in the Toronto Star Sports section, which is the biggest newspaper in Canada, about Mike Cabongo. From then on, like few Canadians, he made the jump to play basketball in the United States, balling at the University of Texas, following the footsteps of Corey Joseph and Tristan Thompson, but he's his own man. With an outsized personality and a million-watt smile to match, I'm happy to be joined by Mike Cabongo. Welcome to Cabby Presents. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And you know how the story goes, man. Being you for that first time was unbelievable. <laughs> I was your biggest fan. Because you know how you used to finish the segments on the score. Right. With my man D. And, you know, you know, it's always been my favorite show when you were on Cabby on the Street. So Thanks, I mean, man. It's a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure. Uh, your voice is a lot deeper than I remember, dude. <laughs> like the traveling, the traveling's catching up to me. Yeah, the traveling's catching up to you, and then like it's you got your like your like eleven thirty voice on, but it's only like it's in the afternoon right now. Actually, you're where are you? You're on the West Coast. Oh, yeah, I'm on the West Coast, so I'm in LA, so it's a three hour difference. Actually, what are you doing so, out there? I got to work out with the Clippers, so you no. Know. I'm just out here right now, just it's grinding, you know, going from city to city, working out for these different teams and, you know, just getting on a flight and having to work out the same day, you know, it's crazy, but I'm enjoying it. So you have to work out later today or you have to work out tomorrow? I actually work out tomorrow, but, um, you know, you got other things to do, you know, with the team and have lunch, dinner and something. So there's always something the team has arranged for you, but... Yeah, it's pretty busy. It's pretty hectic, that's for sure. Do you find that, like, okay, so you work out, and that's, like, one part of your skill set. You're doing basketball drills, and you're being evaluated on, I don't know, your speed, your jumping, your your jump shot, your handles. But then, like, in the social part, like, when you have to, like, have dinner with these dudes, do you all do you feel like you have to be on even more or about the same level? It's just as important. I mean, people, people you know... Uh, it's a million dollar job, you know. It's a million dollar job, and, and people know that the, the interview process is pre, as just as important as on the court stuff. So, you know, with me, I just approach it and be myself. Whenever I'm myself, people tend to like me more, and I don't shy away from being myself. So, but with these interviews, it's just as important as how you play on the court because, you know, people it's a million dollar job interview, and people want to know the type of person that they're getting in their organization. So, it's very important, and um, you know, I take it. Seriously, but at the same time, I'm just myself in these interviews. So, are you? Are you? Do you allow yourself to be funny? Because you're a funny dude. <laughs> but like, I like. You know, are you... Here, yeah, here and there, you know, it, it just comes out where I just find something for people to laugh at or laugh about. You know, that's just me when I'm having conversation. But at the same time, when it's time to get a little serious and, and you know, be a little business savvy, yeah, you know, I have that side in me too. But at the same time, I'm always myself. I, I enjoy putting a smile on people's face and just. I'm all about having a good time and having a positive vibe and positive energy. I can't imagine what business Mike Cabongo looks or sounds like. Like I, I will, I will <laughs> discover this in the future because you'll be doing interviews and then every athlete kind of goes into robot mode where they have yeah. like, and you're going to learn like a bunch of cliches or you just challenge yourself to keep it fresh. But, you know, when you're with a team. It's and, always fresh for me. It's always fresh for me, man. And, you know, it's always going to be fresh for me. Ain't no doubt about that. So <laughs> I, I, enjoy, I, I enjoy talking to new people and meeting new people all the time. It never gets old to me, man. Well, that's good to know because then, cause then you'll, you'll quickly become like a media favorite. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not to say that you'll be, uh, I don't want to say crazy, but as eccentric as Ron Artest. But you know, like oh, when man. they stick a mic, a mic in his face, it's always something fun. It's always some, something fresh and has the potential to be uh, hilarious. I'm not saying you're that. Yeah. I just know that <laughs> it, with what you just said, you will be, you will keep it fresh and and keep it light where it needs to be light. Definitely, without a doubt. So Definitely. what? Okay, so Mike, what happens at these workouts? Like you were so okay. Before that, how many how many teams have you already worked out for? I mean, I worked out for a bunch, but you know, I, I can't really go into a lot of detail. Oh, okay, just, that's fine. Sorry, it's, sorry, it's, sorry. It's just normal. It's just normal basketball stuff. You know, you're on the court. They 
they have a workout that they have scheduled for you to do with these teams, and after that they'll have a dinner or a lunch, and you sit down with, with, with their staff and you have an interview, and that's just really how the process goes. And you're just in different city, and, you know, you go from city to city, and that's what you're doing um, throughout this process um, leading up to the draft. So it, it's a grind. It's a real hard grind that you have to go through, and that's what I'm doing it right doing right now, but I enjoy every minute of it, to be honest, because that is what you dream of, you know, you, I don't have to go to study hall anymore, you know, I, don't have to worry about, I don't have to worry about homework, all I got to worry about is basketball and play a game that I love at a high level, so, I mean, this is every basketball player's dream. Are the workouts kind of the same for teams, or has one team put you through something that's much different than the other teams? I mean, everyone's different. Everyone's really they different are? because they have different different styles of play. You know, some teams, how they play is how they're going to set their, their workout to be. So it's, it's, it's all about the, the different systems that are in this league, and that's what whichever team you go and visit, that's what they're really going to try and, and get you prepared for, for what they do with their system. So they have a bunch of stuff that, 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 that they do with their teams, and they try and implement that in the, in the workout. So it's pretty different. It can be similar because you're competing. That's the only part that could be really similar, but as far as everything else, I mean, it, it's very different with the, the, the different team. Calling in from Los Angeles on the middle of his workout tour is Mike Cabongo on Twitter. You can follow his travels at Mike K9. That's M Y C K K9, all one word, no spaces. Um, do you find that people mispronounce your name when you're at these workouts? Oh, man, they mispronounce my name all the time. And, and you know what? It's funny because it's like you would think, I mean, I know my name is spelled a lot different. I, I know that, you know, and I'm not shying away from that. But I think I need to go and visit some sort of, 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 of court and, and get a lawyer where I have to put my, my name in parentheses. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. People, so that's people part of your life. You pronounce it Mike. <laughs> I just, at times, though, I just let people keep going with the Vic. Because, you know, they, they're saying it so confidently that I'm, you know, I'll just let them. I don't want to correct them. But right, that time right. It gets, it gets a little, yeah, it can get to <laughs> you a, little, a couple of times. But it's all good, man. Mick, if you want to call me Mick, you can. But I prefer Mike. It is Mike. And I, I, I'll correct people, uh, you know, I'll correct people when the time, time needs for me to correct them. You know, I'll let my game do that, you know. Once, there you once go. you start playing, great. I mean, people will know your name, so they don't have to mess it up no more. So I kind of use it as a, a motivational tool. What's your uh, What's your nickname? What do your boys call you? Oh, uh, man, they call me Swag. You swag? Know, young Swag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Mike, what if what if people can... stop saying Swag though? Like those those kind of no, terms. No, no, I've been I've been I've been called this since the fourth grade. Are this you serious? Before, yeah, this is way before everyone was you know on the term Swag and and whatnot. This has been with me since the fourth grade. Well, you know, it used to be called Too Easy, and it was <laughs> flat. Yeah, yeah, Too Easy? It's from back in the day. But, you know, now they just call me Kabongo or Kaboom or Bongo. So those are my, my nicknames. How did, you, how did you get Too Easy? Was that something that the girls started, like, did they give you that nickname? <laughs> I don't think uh, that would be a nickname I would want from girls if they're calling me <laughs> Too Easy. I didn't even know if some guys would like that. I don't think I would like that. But, uh, nah, nah, too easy was from basketball. All right. I was playing, oh, man, you know, the game was too easy, so my friends told me too easy all the time. We used to play on monkey bars and dunk the ball on monkey bars back home in Blake Street, and that's where my name, Too Easy, came from. Hey, which neighborhood did you grow up in? I grew up in Blake Street, you know, Lower, lower East Side in Toronto. Where's that exactly, so, Blake Street? It's right by Region Park, you know. Oh, you grew up in there, dude? Yeah, it's right by there. So. Oh, that whole area has changed, blessed. man. Have you seen it? Have you seen Regent Park in the last couple of years? Yeah, they broke it down. You know, they broke it down, I heard. Oh, dude, it's like totally gentrified. There's like a Sobeys in there. Like there's all, it's, there's all these condos and all these like young wow. professionals in there. And then I'm not oh, sure. My phone's in that cab. What's that? Oh, no. Dang. Yeah, it's, it's, it's totally changed. I mean, I don't know how often you get back. I mean uh to to the city but if the next time you go if you, you you know drive by there or you walk through there you'll be like wow it's it's a lot different um hey oh, I was, yeah. on my way in uh to the studio i was um i was just like walking along queen street and i heard a guy uh driving by uh bumping robin thick's blurred lines 
which um, oh, yeah? which is hey hey hey, which is like every time I hear that, it just puts me uh, in a great mood. When you are when you are working out, do they allow? Do they play music in the gym or anything like that? Uh, I mean, when I'm working out by myself, yeah, I tend to have some music on, but um, not these facilities. When you're working out of these facilities, no, they're not gonna. You just have some guy just out. yelling commands at you. Yeah, yeah. Usually, it's pretty professional. Is it just you in the gym, or are there other guys that are there doing the same things? Like, uh, are there other other potential like other potential draft picks in the gym? Is what uh, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, 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 you usually, have a group of like six people there working out. So, I mean, it's it's pretty pretty packed up, and you know, you're just doing drills. There ain't no time for music while you're working out, isn't it? And then when you're working out by yourself, uh, does that song ha- is is blurred lines in your iPod as one of your one of the songs that gets you hyped? What what which one? Uh, the Robin Fix blurred lines, like in the video. I don't know if you've seen the video. <laughs> you need to YouTube the video, the uncensored version. You have to watch like the Vivo. All the girls are topless. I don't know if you've seen it. It's just it's just topless girls. Robin Thicke singing. Pharrell's in there, and at one point, Ti is combing a girl's hair. <laughs> it's just amazing. Oh, Have you yeah. seen it? I don't. I don't think that's my hype up song. <laughs> <laughs> What's on this playlist of songs that you work out to when you're in the gym? Uh, you know, definitely Drizzy. You know, that that's family. Um, Drake, you know, just Drake all day, but uh, you, but like Drake, half of his music is so low key, like it, or do you just go with like the Boy Wonder tracks that you're all like? Oh, definitely, you high. know, Boy, you know, that's my brother right there. So, I you know all his beats are great, but um, man, Drake, Drake, low key has some stuff. You know, he's very, very talented. I mean, and he's from the city, and he's from the country. So, I'm always repping that. Everywhere. I'm with you. I'm, I'm mad wherever I go, but also, you know, I enjoy. You know, some, some ho, you know, Jay-Z is a great rapper. Um, Kanye is great, and uh, Jeezy is good. You know, you know, I have a variety of different things I like listening to. So, But, you know, I enjoy every type of movie. But, and also D-Bones, who's a, who's a Toronto artist, too. D-Bones. Shout out to D-Bones. Yeah. I haven't heard D-Bones. <laughs> Shout out to D-Bones. Yeah. Shout out to D-Bones. I've heard, of, D-Bones. I've heard of D's Nuts, but I haven't heard of D-Bones, <laughs> which might be the same thing. Uh, D's nuts from W Balls that uh, <laughs> from Snoop Dogg's uh, radio station out there. So, um, okay, so Pharrell is Pharrell is like dominating this part of the summer so far, and then Kanye releases his new record on June eighteenth, which will probably change it. Pharrell right now has got Get Lucky, which is like the biggest song in the world. Obviously, he's got Blurred Lines. He's got this other song called Happy, which I really really love. Now you mentioned Drake and how you reference that you rep Drake. But when you're when you're in there doing like tricep extensions, you know that girls love Beyonce or no new friends is in your <laughs> headphones, or is it? Nah. You can't have no new friends, no new friends, no new no friends, no, friends, no, no. It's just, it's just great melodies, man. He's so talented. With all he is like, really he talented. Has songs. He has songs that just make people just remind, just remember them. It's like melodies in your head, and you can go the whole day just humming some Jake songs. So. Are, yeah, you, have you have you embraced that mantra, no new friends, or are you open to having some new friends? <laughs> I'm very open to having a lot of new friends, but uh, you know, I, I like the line where he's with his day one people. You know, people he's been with since day one, and I have a lot of those people, like you. You know, someone like Appreciate you, you man. supported me since day one, and you know, I'm always gonna have someone like you around, and and, and also friends from back home, but. You know, whenever you get to build new relationships, I always think it's great, and I, and I cherish things like that. Mike, is there anybody that texts you that uses more cuss words than I do? In Texas? Yeah. In text in text uh, messages. In text messages? Who swears the most? Yeah. Do I, is there anybody who swears more than I do in your text messages? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a pretty bad texter. I'm not a great texter. I'm working on it, but I, I do get some 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 cuss words from people when I when I don't respond the way they want me to or how fast they want. Me to. Oh, I don't care about that. I'm just saying, like <laughs> when I was when when all that BS with the NCAA was going, on, I was just I was like I, I was fired up. I mean, I know you were you were very measured and you were very like, hey man, it's just one of those things. Like you were you were being very uh, uh, gracious and and just letting it happen. I was fired up though. I was dropping all kinds of MF mother bleepers here and there. And I don't know. Should I clean it up? Do you want me to clean it up or can I 
can re- resume using mother bleepers in my text messages to you. <laughs> uh, as far as texting, man, you can text however you like. If that's how you feel like texting, you can. But, I uh, sure do. I sure do. Um, but as far as the, you're talking about my suspension, no, I don't want to. I don't really want to talk about that. I'm just saying, at uh, the time that you were going through all that stuff, that's when I was really hitting you with all kinds of colorful language in the text messages. Oh man, it's all good. I, you know, you know, that you know things happen, but. And you moved on from it. Yes, sir. You mentioned day one friends. And like in the past, I'm not sure if, if there it's because there have been more guys coming from Toronto or there's been more spotlight, um, you know, shined in your, your guys' direction. Uh, I'm talking like, you know, Anthony Bennett, Corey Joseph, Tristan Thompson, uh, yourself, uh, Andrew Wiggins are, you know, being part of the small fraternity of uh, basketball players that have NBA talent, how close are you guys? Like, how close are you to those four guys that I listed? Uh, you know, I mean, Corey and Tristan, those are my brothers. I mean, only blood separates us, so that that's what that. And uh, you know, we grew up together, play on the same AAU team, and you know, have the same kind of footsteps of going up with Texas and everything. And I played with Anthony and Finley. You know, these good people. But, you know, me and Tristan and Corey, that's brother. That's that's just lifetime bondship we have. So, you know, I'm very close to those guys. It's, I never, ever need anything. I'm more than, you know, I know they'll be there for me. And if they ever need anything, they know that I'll be there for them. So, it's great to have those guys. On the phone with Mike Cabongo, who's calling in from Los Angeles on, uh, you know, at, I'm not sure what mile uh, he's traveled so far. I'm thinking close to... Uh, uh, 16,000 miles he's already put in on, in the air. I have no idea, but uh, just going from NBA draft workout to NBA draft workout, and we'll uh, see where he goes on June 27th on the NBA draft um, on uh, on ESPN and uh, here in Canada on TSN. Um, uh, you mentioned, okay, the, your, your brothers, I, I think that's, that's very cool um, that you have that relationship and you guys have that bond. There, there's something about Brampton. Ontario, which uh, I'm not sure what it is. My my boss asked me a couple months ago. He's like, "What is it about Brampton, Ontario, that is producing a few more of these NBA dudes?" Do you have any idea why Brampton, the the suburb outside of Toronto, Ontario, for uh, our American listeners, where Tristan's from, where Andrew Wiggins is from, and I'm forgetting a couple other guys, but I know there are a few other guys from Brampton, Ontario. Oh, man, I got no idea. I'm from the city. I'm from Toronto, and it's going to be a great day when I do it, you know, because I'm yes, sir. from Toronto. I, I'm doing it for, for <laughs> I mean, also for the whole country. I think it's just not Brampton, but I, I'm pretty sure they'll tell you it's on a larger scale. I mean, it's great that we're doing this for the whole country. It's not just for that area or where we are, you know. I, we understand that, you know, a lot of people are proud of us from our area, but it's on a larger scale. I mean, we're doing it for the country of Canada and just trying to put the whole country on the map. And I think we're doing a great job of that. And, uh, you know, we're just working really hard and with the national team now with Steve Nash taking over, which is a great thing for us. It is also, it is also helping us out. So, I mean, it's not just one particular area. I mean, it is as far as, yeah, we're from Brampton and yeah, I'm from Toronto, but, you know, it's all about doing it for the country. Mike, when, when Steve Nash gave you a birthday shout-out on Twitter, I was like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, this is impressive, dude. That was impressive. <laughs> How, um, when did you meet Steve Nash? And have you guys become close in, you know, you mentioned he's taking over Ban- uh, sorry, uh, Canada basketball. Just in your years, um, you know, emerging onto the scene of that upper echelon of basketball talent in our country. Oh, man, Steve, I mean, man, he's he's like the GOAT, you know, as far as, being a two-time MVP, and I mean the things that should have been three-time. I mean, shout out to Dirk, but it should have been three-time because that dude was—he yeah, had even better yeah. stats in his third that third season. But you know, Dirk, yeah. Dirk, Dirk, Dirk uh, should have definitely gotten some praise, but should be three-time MVP. Sorry to interrupt you. I just yeah. got hyped for a minute. No, 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 it's cool. But you know, um, you know, with with that for, for him, and also you know, just the things that he's done at that position, he'll go down as probably one of uh, the most. Um, very, very consistent players in that league. I mean, he's done it probably go down to top five. I mean, with his percentages, and you know, a guy that's shooting 90, um, you know, 90% from the free throw line and the 40% three-point shooter, you know, just one of those special players out there and that could really pass the ball. And, 
the things that he's just doing for the country as far as taking over Canada basketball. I think it's great because he has a great basketball mind. He knows a lot about the game, and uh, he's, he's just a student of the game and also a teacher, and he's been very helpful for me and other, other young players in Canada as far as if you need anything to reach out to him, he's more than willing to respond and be there for you. So, I mean, Steve has, has done a lot of great things for me and also other big people. When you get to the NBA, Mike, do you um, – two? This, this is kind of a two-part question. Uh, one, uh, do you realize that um, – sorry, let me rephrase that. When you get to the league, will you adapt the hipster culture of style that is uh, being championed by Russ Westbrook, James Harden, I think Paul George had some – uh, you know, kitchen kitchen tablecloth. I, I don't think you've seen me dress. I've been. There's a reason why my name has been Swag since the fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I do. I mean, Wait. I was wearing Jabot jeans when people didn't you know. <laughs> oh, over. I've been wearing. I've been wearing nudies. I've. You know, this is what I do. I mean, I love fashion. So, and, I, and I've been already doing that. So it's nothing new to me. I mean, it's pretty new out there, but. And I've always been in the fashion. I've always been into all that stuff. So I mean, so wait, 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 wait. Look. So uh, will you embrace the hipster culture that is currently in the I, NBA? I don't know. I, I don't know if it, it's called hipster because I, I I don't know if what I'm dressing like is called hipster. That might be what it's called nowadays. I don't know what it's called, but I like my clothes fit. I'm very um, precise with what I do, mixing and matching different things and colors. And I don't wear, you know, I love wearing black a lot, but you know, I mix it up here and there. But you know me, I, I love fashion. I, I love dressing up and. I know how to dress, and you know, I don't know if it's called hips. I don't know if I well, okay, well, dress it's called hips. okay. So, okay, let me ask you a few questions about it. Do you wear different color framed glasses? No, I don't do all that. Do no. you do you wear <laughs> do, you, do you wear glasses that aren't like uh, eyeglasses that aren't prescription, just for the look? Yeah, you know, one, one time I did. Yeah, you okay. know, you you can have that look one time. That, okay, there. that's that's, that's hipsterish. Nice. Okay, how tight are your pants? My pants are. My pants fit just right. I don't think I'm where I can. But are they I skinny, though? I got you... things down there that need to breathe, so I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, you know? My... You can't, what? Can't, I can't be walking around like, like I'm going to have some Speedos on or anything. No, you know. <laughs> I, I need some room, but at the same time, I like them to fit right and look good and presentable. And You know, I'm not wearing the over baggy jeans and sagging my pants. You know, I like things, you know, to look very professional where they fit me and, you know. Okay, so what... Okay, when you go into the department store and you're going to buy a pair of pants or you're going to buy some Levi's, do you go to the slim fit or the extra slim fit uh, pile? What is the cut on you the pants? You will not see me at the extra slim fit. So, that's, but, okay. that's not that. <laughs> okay, that that. so slim fit. <laughs> now, uh, would you ever, have you ever worn uh, capris like D. Wade did in that Indiana series, which kind of blew up the internet when that dude came in walking with pants that I think were in Gabrielle Union's closet? <laughs> I mean, I think he gets paid to wear that, and to, to be honest. And if I was getting paid to wear it, I would wear it too. And I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't mind what you, I wouldn't mind what y'all saying. I'm pretty sure. Giovanni or whoever's, you know, um, picking out his clothes, they're, they're paying him to wear that. So, I mean, hey, I mean, he's into fashion. I think his fashion is great. And, you know, hats off to him, man. He, he's getting paid to do it. So I, I don't know how many people would say no. Okay. So, okay, Mike, la last question. Do you own shirts that have the same pattern as your grandma's couch? <laughs> Ah uh, man, I had those in the second grade. I yeah, I had those. Like, I yeah had but those in the... I had some I had some suspenders to go along with. <laughs> those are long. Those are definitely long retired, man. I retired those. And those are those are long gone, and they will not be in my in my in my in my repertoire of clothes anymore. Hey, Mike, did your grandma's couch have plastic on it? Don't lie. <laughs> my grandma's all the way in Africa. So. Yeah, but dinner. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't been back. I haven't been back yet. But uh, no, we did not have plastic bags. No, not no, plastic bags, it. but just a plastic cover on the couch. My grandma did one hundred percent. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. No, no, no. I mean, I don't know. I'm home with my my grandma, but as far as home, I don't think so. But you have to be very careful with them couches, man. <laughs> Parents don't play around with them couches, man. I know, dude. It's <laughs> certain parts of the house you're not allowed in. Uh, whose style game is going to be sharper, yours or Tristan's? Because Tristan was on TSN a couple days ago looking clean, like black shirt, button all to the top, no tie. My dude, it was all lined up, 
Like, and he was sounding sophisticated, smooth, was talking about Tim Duncan and teeing up game two. My guy was looking fresh. And and Tristan on Instagram, he's a style guy. I remember seeing a picture. I had him on the podcast. That dude was hanging out with, with uh, Pitbull in Miami on a boat. I was like, dude, <laughs> your life. Like, man. But he's like, oh, I'm a fashion guy, much the same as you are. So whose style game is going to be sharper 2013-2014. Yeah, we'll see. I'll leave it all the fans. You, ain't got, you know, you got to have that vote somewhere online where ah, well, me and T go at it. But me and T <laughs> are very similar, you know, because, you know, we like the same things. I mean, that's like, you know. So I'll let the people decide. I, I'll show them what I got. I'll just, you know, I'm, a, I'm an Instagram picture just for you. Oh, you, hey, are you, what you what, what's your handle on Instagram? Uh, Mike K9, same thing. Same, same thing. thing. So, so for those listening, it's oh. at M-Y-C-K- K9, one word, no spaces, no underscores. Uh, on the phone with Mike Cabongo, who's in uh, calling in from Los Angeles, who uh, announces that his style game is going to be on point. Uh, it will rival, if not surpass, uh, Tristan no, Thompson. No, you know what? We're not going to say that. We're just going to let the people decide. Okay, fine. Yeah, we'll let, let the people say, decide. You know, just let them, you know, we're just going to let them decide. I mean, I, I think I could dress, you know, some people think that they can dress in a terrible so I don't want to sound like I'm one of those guys that think I can uh, dress awesomely and people see me and they, oh, you're the worst dresser. <laughs> I'm just saying I, I personally think I am, and if, if we're just going to let people decide if, if I am or not. And if I'm not, I'm going to switch up what I'm doing. And if I am, hats off to me. So we're just going to leave it, leave it at that. Ain't no comparisons with me and T because, you know, that's my brother. We ain't going to do that. In a way, like, the style, it, it like, Obviously, there is a ton of competition on those NBA courts. Those are the best 450 athletes, basketball players in in the world on planet Earth. They play in that league, but it's there's also like a subculture of of like fashion off the court. And I feel like like as much as Craig Sager, the TNT sideline reporter, gets uh, crushed every to every Thursday by guys like Kevin Garnett, Dwayne Wade, LeBron. I feel like he's kind of in there too now. Like Craig Sager could be like, hey, listen, I've been doing this for 10 years and you young fellas are just kind of catching up to me. Will I see, <laughs> will you have any custom suits uh, that will rival Craig Sager's very eccentric style? Please say no, uh, please man. say no, please say no. We're just going to go like, we're just gonna, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Craig, you know, that's a legend, man. I'm just getting my feet wet. How yeah. often do you wear I can't, pink? I can't. I can't even talk about him, man. You know, he's a legend. How often do you wear pink? I've probably worn pink twice in my life. But, really? you, know, it's not, you know, if it looks good, I'm wear it. You know, that's all I can say about that. You know, hey, don't don't shy away fashion, from pink. I think with fashion, though, if it looks good, it, 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 you, can, you can wear it. You know, there's, there's, there's a line where it can not look good, and there's a line where it can. So, you know, if it looks good on me, I'm more than willing to wear it. But if it doesn't, I will not. So that's just as far as fashion with me. Hey, have you seen that? under 16 mixtape that just got posted a couple of days ago like these dudes the freshman mixtape have you seen that no i haven't seen it yet is it dope oh my gosh it, it's just these kids at this uh tournament and they're just like warm it's like like a practice and they're just throwing down these dunks that are just like if that I was i mean it's not surprising i'm telling you man these dudes are 14. The generations, the generations just keep getting better. I mean, I have a little brother, and he's just doing things like, I'm like, how do you know all that? And they learn from the generation before. So whenever basketball is being played at a high level, the generation before, is what that's what they're watching, and they pick it up, and then, like, boom, you know. And like, they're just, you know, they're, they're talented, and they just pick up things from other people. So I think that's great, man. So, hey, Cabby. Yeah. I got to roll out, man. I got I got to roll out. But I really, really appreciate the time, man. This is this is the first time ever that someone had to had to get out. <laughs> this is Mike. Listen, you you're lucky that I love you like a brother, like a young brother. But as a young brother, I am gonna I am gonna give you like 17 I punches. Just, I just lost my phone. I just lost my other phone, man. I gotta find my phone. I'm gonna. I'm, you're talking, getting. Char I was talking you're, to you. I was talking to you. Make sure I talk to you and got in the cab. Hey, don't try to sugarcoat it. Don't try to sugarcoat Listen, it. Hold on, again. let me finish. I was in the cab. And I was, that's when I answered your phone call, and, and, I, and then I left the other phone in the phone. That I got to find it, and it's the only phone, and I'm trying to... Wait, you left it in the taxi? You. Yeah, so I, I haven't called the taxi back, because I've been on the phone with you, and I couldn't cut off... Oh, sorry, man. man. So, you know, 
This this is a well orchestrated excuse to get off the phone, so I'll accept it because it's pretty well orchestrated. <laughs> Who would make that up? Someone would make that up. <laughs> well, listen, man. Uh, good luck with your workout with the Clippers. Good luck with your 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 subsequent workouts, your future workouts, and I hope uh, it'll be a great day when uh, your name is called by either David Stern or uh, Adam Adam Silver, or is it Russ Granick? One of those. Adam Silver's taking over. But then either way, good luck, uh, right. good health. You know, every, you know, you have a huge fan base back here in, in in the whole country. So, brother, do what you got to do, and we'll definitely see you soon. Thank you for your time, man. Thank you, Cavi, man. Whenever, man, I'll get back on the show whenever you need me. I'm more than willing to do it. But thank you again, Canada. Love you like always, Toronto, Lake Street. Hey, now uh, yeah. go find your phone because we don't want those photos circulating on the internet. Man, it's fine. Everything's fine. There's this app called Keep Safe. Ah, there you go. Safe. You are. There a... you go. iPhone five, like. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good one, man. Good luck. Hey, thank you, Mike Cabongo, with the elaborate scheme to get off the phone. No, I'm just kidding. A young point guard from the Regent Park area of Toronto, and a sophomore from the University of Texas, and a hard-working basketball player with the personality of a TV star. I can't wait until he gets into the NBA, and I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for him on June 27th at the NBA draft, as I will keep my fingers crossed for Anthony Bennett and Kelly Olynyk On Twitter and Instagram, you can find Mike Cabongo at Mike K9. That's M-Y-C-K-K-9, no underscores, no spaces. And in real life, you can find him in a gym working hard on his jump shot and his handles. Glad to have him on the phone, and I hope you enjoyed our conversation. And to throw it back, I'll close like this. That's it for me. I'm Cabby, and I'm with my man Too Easy, and we're gone. Thank you for listening to Cabby Presents, the podcast. 